The Juicy Salif is a citrus squeezer that looks alien, ominous, and retro-futuristic. What about squeezing fruits relates to that aesthetic? Absolutely nothing. But it's still one of Alessi's most commercially successful products. It completely subverts your expectations around what a kitchen product should be, and because of that, it's hard to look away. Confusion leads to curiosity, and curiosity leads to an urge to buy it. This is an industrial design analysis with design theory. A study was actually done on the Juicy Salif by the Laboratory of Ergonomics and Usability in Rio de Janeiro. As you'd expect, it scored pretty poorly in terms of actually extracting juice from citrus fruit, especially when you compare it with other similar products. According to this study, 28% of people who owned the Juicy Salif never even used it for squeezing juice. And I think that's a key statistic here. They used it purely as an aesthetic sculptural display item. The Juicy Salif is probably the greatest present day example of style over substance. As a juicer, its utility is average at best, but as a conversation piece, it rates 10 out of 10. It's like a little alien came to visit your house, and because of that, it grabs a lot of attention. I wouldn't immediately endorse the mass manufacturing of beautiful objects that have no utility. Mass production uses a lot of resources, and it can be hard on our planet. However, there's still a lot that we can learn about desirability in product design from the Juicy Salif. So ideally, products should be both beautiful and useful, but sometimes a product is so beautiful that you just have to have it. The Juicy Salif, at least for some people, is one of those products. It's also one of those products that's become an icon. You buy it because of what it represents. It's pretty much a giant inside joke among everyone in the design community. Basically, it was an internet meme before the internet was really even a thing, or internet memes were even a thing. So let's break this down and figure out why the Juicy Salaf elicits such a strong emotional response. What I like to do is think of a few words that I associate with this design and sort of break down why I make those associations. If you want, pause the video here and think of a couple words that you associate with this design and we can compare. So to me, the Juicy Salaf communicates an ominous, alien, and retro-futuristic aesthetic. Let's start with what makes it look ominous. First of all, there's no indication of function or how it works. In fact, its function is intentionally kept vague. I mentioned this in my PS5 design review video, and even though these products look very different, they have some similarities in terms of the philosophy behind the design. There are no visual indicators that hint at how the object might work. The only indication of its function is the ridged surface at the top, since a lot of other hand juicers have that functional element as well. This ambiguous functionality makes the object just a little bit ominous. You're not quite sure what it is, which creates a certain sense of uneasiness. There's also no overt indication of how it was manufactured. We're used to seeing parting lines or witness marks as artifacts of the manufacturing process. There's none of that here. Anytime you're not sure about what something is, it evokes a sense of curiosity. You want to interact with a product in order to understand it. This ominous feeling eventually translates to curiosity. If you see this product in a store, you're very likely to go up to it and touch it. And as many of you already know, customers who physically interact with a product are significantly more likely to purchase it. This is still the case now, even with the prevalence of online shopping, but it was especially the case in the early 1990s when this design was initially released. That ominous feeling is also heightened by all of these acute angles in the silhouette. These acute angles create a competing sense of direction for your eyes. That's one reason why we associate pointy with evil. Now, of course, pointy or spiky things are dangerous, which is probably one other reason why we think of them as evil or bad, but they also don't give a clear path for your eye to visually move through the silhouette. It's confusing to look at. Cynics Design does a great video of this principle, which I'll link in the description. Just as a contrasting example, look at this car. It's pretty clear how your eye should move through the silhouette. One line clearly flows to the next. With the Juicy Salif, there's this sort of downward directionality to the form, but there are also all of these jagged edges that interrupt the otherwise hyper-streamlined shape. That contrast between hyper-streamlining and angular edges is just kind of jarring visually, and the fact that it's chrome actually plays that up even more. 
Not only is the streamlined silhouette interrupted by these jagged shapes, but all of the reflections inside of the object create even more weird jagged shapes, creating even more visual noise that contrasts against the clean exterior silhouette. Another thing is that, at least to me, the proportions seem just a little bit off. So example where this form intersection happens, it's not quite at the one third mark and not quite at the halfway mark. The main part of the device that you actually squeeze the juice on is just a little bit stretched out to me. And the spindly legs are precariously thin as if they're just barely supporting the weight of the main juicing bulb. All of these things in combination create this certain sense of uneasiness. Obviously you're not fearing for your life when you see this juicer. I mean, it's a juicer for God's sake but it definitely elicits a reaction. So between the ominous lack of man-made cues, the contrasting silhouette and material choice, and the odd proportions, it's just an object that piques your interest because it's a little bit odd. On that note, it also looks quite alien. It has a similar feel to the monolith in 2001, A Space Odyssey. To be clear, these objects could not be any more different in terms of the way they look, but they both elicit a certain similar reaction. This is actually a great example of how you can communicate a similar idea using two completely different aesthetic methods. This random black monolith just randomly appears out of nowhere with no known function or shape. It's clearly not man-made, clearly it's from another world, it's mysterious and strange, and with the Juicy Salif, the fact that there are no obvious manufacturing witness marks is one major thing that contributes to its alien look and feel. The shape is also very reminiscent of tripods or fighting machines from the famous H.G. Wells novel, War of the Worlds. This later became a movie in 2005. The destructive alien craft sits on long spindly legs, just like the Juicy Salif. So despite the obvious alien reference, the general shape is actually inspired by a squid. Philippe Stark was supposedly on the Amalfi Coast, munching on some calamari and squeezing lemon onto his dish when inspiration struck. Now, I don't know if you've looked at a squid recently, but here's a quick refresher. These things are weird looking. So if his inspiration was an alien looking creature like the squid, it stands to reason that the end result feels very unfamiliar and foreign. The cephalopod evolutionary line is one that is just completely different from ours, and it certainly shows in their physical attributes. They've adapted a completely different kind of intelligence that's very foreign to us. And the fact that the Juicy Salif is inspired by this is probably the thing that makes it look so alien. The next interesting thing about this design is that while it does feel ominous, it also feels retro inspired. And I think this is actually critical to us accepting it as a product because if it looked completely alien and off the wall, I don't think anybody would buy it. But because the Juicy Salif is inspired a lot by this retro futurist aesthetic, it's a lot more acceptable and accessible. The Juicy Salif is probably inspired by the streamlining and art deco style that you'd see in the 1930s and 1940s. Raymond Lowy is probably the most prolific designer who championed this aesthetic. The style was sort of derived from the art deco style minus the ornamentation. It was all about pure uninterrupted lines that felt streamlined and dynamic. The materials were also very pure and streamlined, utilizing smooth surfacing and polished metals. I'm not really sure why a pencil sharpener needs to be aerodynamic, but that's beside the point. Get it point like pencil sharpener, sharpening pencil. So the real point is that it just gives these otherwise mundane objects a lot of visual movement. This is presumably what designers from the 1930s thought the world might look like 100 years in the future, hence the term retro futurism. The Juicy Salif most definitely borrows from this style, and this is interesting because on one hand, it feels very ominous and otherworldly, which is what we've been talking about a lot up till this point. On the other hand, the design is clearly inspired from an industrial design style that's almost a century old. This makes it feel both alien and familiar. And I think that this paradox is what helps to make the object so captivating. If it was just ominous and alien looking, no one would want it in their house. But the fact that it's just a tiny bit familiar helps us to accept it. Overall, criticizing the Juicy Salad for its lack of functional utility is missing the point. Squeezing juice is a secondary function of the Juicy Salad. Philippe Stark himself probably said it best. How can we find the right balance between function and joy? Joy is a function, <laughs> that's all. The primary function of the Juicy Salif is to start conversations, just like the hot mess that's about to happen in the comments of this video. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It definitely helps me out, and I'll see you around until next time.